Kevin Cates. I'm Avon. And I'm Beverly. We have Beverly joining us today. Sonia couldn't be with us, so thanks so much for joining us at the table. Thank you so much for having me. We are at Floriana Restaurant, located at 1602 17th Street in DuPont Circle. That's right, and today we are dishing with a very well-known person around D.C. I'm not even sure he knows how well-known he is, actually. <laughs> but whenever you say the name Tian Wong, everyone's like, oh yeah, Tian, I should know Tian. Why should I know Tian? Well, we want to tell you why you should know Tian. Tian is the CEO, right, of Opus 8. Yes, CEO that's correct. of Opus 8. Now, what is that? Opus 8 is a private investment company that we have here in suburban Maryland, and we invest basically in minority positions in a lot of local companies, technology businesses, and also some regional uh, media and business services companies. So this is why you should know Tian, because he's involved in like everything, right? So you what you do, you kind of have your hands in a lot of, in your in a lot of things yes. around the city. But when you say finan venture capital, financial kinds of things like that, you know, what what does that what does that mean that you do? Well, we're investors in these companies, so I wouldn't call ourselves a venture capitalist okay. or a private equity firm because we don't run a fund per se. We actually invest our own capital and capital of our partners on a deal by deal basis. So we get involved in the companies that we invest in. So we like to think of ourselves maybe as more super angel investors as super opposed angel. to I've institutional. Always, yeah. I've always been really curious about the folks who put up the money and invest in these businesses that are trying to get off the ground. How do you decide what's worthy and what you think you're going to make a really good return on investment? From our approach, it's, it's really one thing. It's the people that are involved. It's the leadership, the CEO, the management team. Have they done it before? Are they passionate about their customers? Are they passionate about their products and services? And uh, do we feel they can execute? Because usually, when we invest in an idea, one thing's for sure, the idea usually is going to change. But the management team has to be nimble and resourceful enough to, to move and shift around as things as the market changes. So we're trying to back basically teams of people. So you said you work on a deal-by-deal -deal basis of your partners, and so you uh, would you say that you play more of an active or a less active role in the companies that you participate in uh, from a financial perspective? Well, we are probably not as active as a venture capitalist per se. We get active where we feel we have an expertise level, so things like HR, recruiting, training, uh, motivating people, customer relationship management, customer service, customer care. Those are areas that our team has a lot of experience in. So we try to lend a hand, a hand in that area. We're going to talk about Up CRM in a second for those who don't know, but you started, just, you just, Opus 8 is not your first venture. You started with a previous venture. This is my eighth company. Eighth That's company why I called it Opus 8. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that why? That's oh, right. I thought there was yeah. some musical intonation. I like music. I like Opus X cigars and Opus wine, but, yeah, but it's really, uh, in Latin it means work, as in like, you know, work of, not work of art, but a creation, so. So since this, this is, is your eighth, eighth yeah. is this your magnum opus, or are you going to just keep going from here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope so, and we really? bought a company called Lore Systems, which is really opus nine, if you will, um, but, so we're sort of going to keep going where the market takes us, and where the opportunities well, let's are. let's talk about the market for a second. I mean, things have really changed here in D.C. Well, everywhere in the United yes. States, but in the last few years. How has that changed what you do? Uh, it's forced us to focus more on opportunities that we think have the best chance of success. We have limited resources, both in terms of capital and people, so we have to focus our resources into areas where, where, where we think we're going to be the most successful, and we're concentrating our bets in those areas as well. Have you seen deals uh, slow down during the recession? For example, in the VC world, you saw a lot of deals uh, sort of dry up. And would you say the same for being a super angel? Yes, it's dried up a lot. Quality, high quality opportunities have really dried up substantially. Yes. Did it change how you evaluate what you make an investment in? Uh, Were you, are you less likely to, or less likely to take a, a risk of something that might be considered a, a real risk, or and go for the sure bet? I would say we're much less likely. So instead of trying to hit home runs, we're happy hitting doubles and singles, doubles and triples. So what yes. do you think is why you had more success in a lot of the historical VC model where it hit, it had maybe 20 or 30 people in the fund or right. companies in the fund to hit at least one home run. That's right. They're going and for it all. Going for, going yeah. Yeah, that one prices. hit can pay for that one grand slam will pay for every yeah. failure. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, our risk profile is much lower. We we prefer to have a steady know success as opposed to that home run so now everybody watching this show that's ever had a business plan in their life is going 
they are super angel investors. We need to talk to them. So what is it kind of, what is, she asked you about your criteria, but what is the process of asking someone like you to get involved in their business? How would someone go about being in touch with you in the first place? I think, you know, you need to have a compelling idea, whether it's a great team or a great uh, product or service. Um, you know, we like, we invest in companies that already have an existing management team, already have profitability. Not a lot necessarily, but they're already up and running and profitable because we don't want to take that startup risk to go from zero to something. You know, we want companies that have actually landed customers on their own. They have a bunch of happy customers and they're looking for money to grow their sales and marketing organization or, or whatever to build out their platform as opposed to someone who needs money to develop their idea in the first place. Where do those folks go for money? FF and F probably. Yeah. <laughs> Friends, family, and, and, and fools. And fools. And fools. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Avon mentioned and I said, oh. I would do that. Okay. <laughs> that's good. We mentioned CRM, and that's a word, that's like a term that you hear a lot, but a lot of us don't really know what it means, and it seems like you're an expert in this. So what is CRM? Can you give us the, the elevator? Yeah, in a, in a nutshell, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. So it's a term that was developed maybe 15 years ago. Um, I had a, my prior company was a CRM company that we wound up selling to a public company, but basically it's a discipline and a set of technologies and procedures and processes by which you uh, sort of um, understand better your customers and figure out ways in which you can maximize what they call lifetime customer value, uh, the, the spend per customer by segmenting your customers by whatever. It could be segmented by you know, how much money they have or where they live, what it could, on a, on, that's on a consumer basis. On a business-to-business -business basis, it could be segmented by industry or by size of company, number of employees, geographic location, etc. And it's basically um, a set of tools by which you can understand your customer better and then therefore grow your business better because the theory is that it's a lot harder to get a new customer mm -hmm. than to make an existing customer happy. So CRM is the science and art of making your existing customers happy and trying to um, use that as a platform to grow your company. I think Better it's become business intelligence. Exactly. Yeah, business intelligence is a key piece of CRM, yes. Well, there, folks, there's, yeah. there you have it. There is why you want to know, Tia, because just sitting around the table with him makes your mind start going, wow, there's a lot we can learn from you. There's a lot we can learn from you. So thank you for joining us at the table. Thank thanks you. for teaching thanks us. Thanks for having me. Too. I really appreciate it. And thanks for, for investing in the diversity of business in the district. <laughs> we appreciate it. And as Thanks. always, we appreciate you watching us here on this episode of The Dish. Check back next week and see who's dishing with us.